So welcome to this um, open air provide uh, community call. So dedicated to um, the, the relevant updates for uh, our community. So our um, managers of data sources that are contributing with content to, to open air. Uh, so just to discuss uh, some of the recent developments, uh, novelties that we have in our in our services, everything what comes to um, our providers, not only the dashboard, the provide dashboard itself as a, as a service uh, with some added value functionalities, but also so guidelines, interoperability guidelines, uh, and um, other um, stuff around the support. Uh, to our content providers. Um, so usually we dedicate some time to some updates. I think what, what is relevant here is just to share with you that uh, we are progressing uh, uh, with in some updates in, in our beta installation to align with some of the work that we have in, in NEOSC, in the European Open Science Cloud, as the Open Air uh, is uh, an important provider of the 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 EOSC ecosystem, so we we have some important work that we are doing in the in the side of um, of open air provide to align with uh, with that work. Um, so soon uh, the coming uh, so during October and then in November we will have some some novelties. One of the main novelties, for example, is for to 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 to, to register. Uh, repositories not, now we don't have uh, a difference between um, uh, uh, the registration process between data repositories or data archives and publication repositories so we will have all in the in the same place um, gathering information from the three um, main authoritative directories so we don't have only open door and re three data for uh, publications and, and and data repositories, but we have also fair sharing. So these three authoritative directors will be um, the entry point to the registration process, and we will present this for sure uh, in the coming weeks uh, in the, during the, the this this month, and you will see that that difference in the in the provide dashboard. Uh, so we will have other other novelties, but we can we can talk about the, them in, in November in the call November. So every month in the first Wednesday of the month, we have these community calls where we discuss and we present this development. We have a main topic. The main topic of today is the uh, Cree systems and the uh, uh, the way to integrate them in open air. So the work that we are doing with Eurocris, uh, this collaboration, quite fruitful collaboration. Uh, we have finally, we have everything in, in place or almost everything in place in terms of the, um, the dashboard to proper validate and register Cris systems in open air. So uh, let's hear from, from our colleagues and uh, I, Pass the floor to Andreas from University of Bielefeld from Open Air Provide Team to to manage and to present. We will have time at the end and uh, to, for discussions, for questions, and of course, if you want to put questions during the presentation in the chat, just put it because this will facilitate then the, the conversation. Thank you, Andreas, for your availability. Thank you, Pedro. Thank you, Pedro, for the uh, for the introduction and also André, that you have uh, spent time today on your on your holiday. And um, yes, uh, today the community call is a little bit um, specialized uh, regarding and uh, regarding the research information systems. Um, it is uh, the first time that we have in this community call. Um, a joint uh, pre presentation um, together with our open air partner Eurochris, and um, we uh, will take today a look to um, only one topic. Uh, one topic is um, the research information systems. Um, in open air, in Eurochris, we will see it uh, in a moment. And uh, afterwards, we uh, would like to see, um, look forward to see your questions um, and make a discussion afterwards. 
My name is Andreas Czerniak from Bielefeld University Library in Germany. And uh, during the OpenAI Advanced project, um, I was responsible for the integration of uh, current research information systems in OpenAI. Um, in this case, we have some development achievements from this project. Uh, we will see it um, afterwards. Uh, today, and I'm very happy um, that we have this uh, joint community call with Eurochris. And uh, from Eurochris, um, we have uh, Pablo de Castro uh, on the online stage uh, with me. Hello, Pablo. Um, I'm happy that you are here, and uh, I would like to uh, pass the floor uh, for the first slide to you and to you, Chris. Okay, thank you, Andreas. Please introduce uh, your, yourself. Yes. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Pablo de Castro. Uh, thanks, Andreas, for the intro, Pedro as well. Uh, I'm not sharing my screen, uh, so I'm not sharing my camera. Apologies, because I'm on a slightly wobbly internet connection, so I wouldn't like it to crash. Um, Open Air and Eurocris have a memorandum of understanding uh, since the spring of 2018, if I'm not mistaken. And one of the main goals of this collaboration between Open Air and Eurocris is to try and promote Chris systems as content providers, metadata providers for the Open Air aggregation, which of course already has a lot of additional types of uh, content providers, such as uh, publication repositories, data repositories, journals, and so on and so forth. Um, I am rather confident most of you in the call already know about Eurocris, but uh, I'd like to very briefly introduce it. Uh, next slide, Andreas, please. Um, as um, a nonprofit organization based in the Netherlands, devoted to uh, promoting uh, collaboration across stakeholders involved in the research information management uh, domain, and specifically devoted to promoting interoperability across uh, CRE solutions, research information management solutions through the CERIF uh, standards. The CERIF stands for the Common European Research Information Format, and the Eurocris is the custodian for this standard as appointed by the European Commission uh, back then, many years ago. There is a task group within Eurocris that Jan Borzak leads, who is in the call today, I'm happy to say, uh, devoted to SERIF architecture and to the kind of maintenance of SERIF, which is kind of permanently evolving. You can see on the slides, on the slide, other areas of activity for Eurocris besides SERIF, um, such as projects that Eurocris is involved in, maybe worth mentioning is the SERIF refactoring project that Jan and Dragan Ivanovic are both leading to adapt SERIF to kind of the modern times. Uh, the DRIS, the Director of Research Information System, Systems that Eurocris maintains will be particularly relevant uh, in today's call, and we will talk a little bit more about it in a short while. We have a publications repository of our own where we store all the presentations and the research outputs stemming from the events that we organize. These events include Chris conferences. There was one in May this year uh, as an in-person event in Dubrovnik in Croatia. And there will be a, an autumn 2022 membership meeting next November and December, towards the end of November, in Nijmegen in the Netherlands. Uh, I think Andreas mentioned he will also uh, provide some information on this. Um, we are hoping that we will be able to have a presentation there on the progress of Chris harvesting through open air. I think that's it from my side, Andreas, for the time being. So back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Pablo. 
So yes, um, thanks for the introduction of uh, Eurochris. So um, most of you know also open air, but uh, we will take a close look, a closer look um, to the path of open air. Open air stands for open access infrastructure for research in Europe. Uh, focusing on open access, uh, data, da uh, open data and open science, and started with some pilots in late two, uh, 2006. Um, open Air itself starts some projects in 2009, um, and uh, during this time, their uh, open air develops a lot of services, um, components, trainings, uh, but also uh, open air guidelines. Um, in 2010, um, open air fo focusing on literature, on open access literature uh, repositories, and um, the first guidelines are um, have focusing on this part. After this, OpenSC see also um, that data sets are, uh, are relevant, are very relevant. And uh, the guidelines are for data archive repositories are uh, published in 2012. In 2015, OpenAir has this development um, due to current research information systems. So uh, we uh, open air see the uh, evolution there and uh, CRIS systems come more and more uh, important. So the first uh, guidelines for CRIS managers are published in 2015. In 2019, um, there are uh, some uh, updating steps in the guidelines. Um, the literature is involved to institutional and thematic repositories. So um, these guidelines are not focusing anymore on uh, literature, journal articles, articles, um, and so on. Um, but it also focus on uh, data sets and something uh, relevant to this. And in 2018 also we, uh, updating the guidelines for CRIS managers to the current one um, that I am uh, present in a minute. In 2022 this year, uh, we are uh, focusing on updating the open air CRIS uh, guidelines. Um, and uh, we will see uh, in a minute, uh, what are here the major updates in the guidelines for this? Um, since around about 2010, open air harvesting uh, repositories from all over the world. Um, you will see here uh, the world map and all the repositories. Um, not all could could be shown. <laughs> uh, some uh, some repositories are highlighted. Uh, some are end of the life, but uh, still exists, uh, like the uh, Microsoft Academic Graph. But uh, OpenAI is also integrating open citations, um, ORCID, data site, uh, also um, article processing charges from the OpenAPC project. Uh, could harvesting SEMA org, BioXEMA, integrating Sclo uh, Scroll Explorer, um, have uh, also uh, integrating also the registries of read 3 data, fair sharing, uh, grid, Eurocris, the DRIS, um, and ROAR, and the directory of open access journals, and many, many more. Um, that I couldn't present here today or in this time. This are, uh, these uh, metadata from these repositories and registries uh, will be um, collected uh, on a weekly basis and will be materialized in the open air research graph. How, um, 
are do open air harvesting all these kinds of repositories. Um, this is a short overview about the steps that open air is doing to uh, for creating the open air research graph. Um, as you know, your data source, the Chris system, the curator repository, institutional or thematic, or journals uh, would be harvested on a weekly basis. Um, this harvesting um, has a continuous validation on the metadata level. So um, each of these data sources have an um, compatible um, guidelines level. And uh, thanks to our continuous validation, we could uh, we check these uh, newly aggregated uh, metadata from their repositories. From this, we make the open air research graph raw. Um, then after this, uh, we have some uh, deduplication um, uh, procedures, deduplication on the metadata record level, um, but also on uh, level of organizations. Um, because uh, we see metadata are, um, are exposed from different data sources, but um, the reference article are uh, the same. Uh, also for organizations, um, like for my organization, Bielefeld University is called Universität Bielefeld in Germany, or a, a, an acronym University of Bielefeld, or Bielefeld University, and so on. Um, as you know, all these problems will be uh, focusing there. Then we have some enrichments, um, thanks to our uh, full text mining and data, and data mining. And after this, the open air research graph is in place and could be, uh, could be used by our portals. At the moment, we have round about 450 million harvested records, uh, more than 500 million bilateral links, uh, 30 million full texts, and 160 million deduplicated research products. Um, in the picture of the European Open Science Cloud, um, you see on the left side the, the data source and followed by the um, harvesting or the aggregation of these data sources based on the guidelines, interoperability guidelines um, in our special uh, talk today is the CRIS guidelines. And um, we have some validation steps. And after this, um, the open air research graph or the, it's, um, it's one component of the uh, European Open Science Cloud Research Product Catalog um, will be published and could be used by different portals. On the one hand, on the open, open air portals like Explore, we will see it later today. Um, also by our monitor from open air, the open science observatory, but it will also be used by the European Commission funders portal and uh, will also provide information uh, to repository back to repositories or or research um, communities and so on. Today we focusing only on the data source and um, the guidelines and registration. Based on our guidelines, as um, Pablo said, we use the common European research information model as a basis. And the common, uh, the model has um, a lot of entities if you are familiar with inf uh, research information systems, there is a lot of um, managing of entities uh, between 
different kinds. And um, you will see here a short overview about um, the model and the relations between um, the open air guidelines uh, with focusing uh, on mostly on at the moment at the moment uh, on patents, publications and products uh, and also on projects, persons and organizations. That's our at the moment the main focus uh, for the open air guidelines and the harvesting process. The guidelines are focusing also on uh, funding and equipment or instruments. We see a lot of uh, development regarding instruments and equipments um, from RDA, fair, uh, fair for research. Hardware are established um, during this year. Uh, and also uh, the Helmholtz uh, metadata group will take a look, a closer look to instruments and uh, will have make some um, developments there. Um, and on funding, uh, of course, is important for the whole process uh, of uh, research. Um, a little bit at the bottom, left is the um, uh, entity of, uh, of, of conferences, events, uh, which is at the moment, um, it is interesting, but will not be um, relevant for the um, harvesting process at the moment, currently. As I said before, uh, the open air guidelines uh, based on the Zarif standards and um, first will, uh, is firstly published in 2015. The guidelines have at the moment the uh, version number 1.1.1. And um, we are in the phase for updating these guidelines. Uh, one of the major updating part is um, to update the guidelines to the latest core vocabulary resource type or resource types, uh, which is published in the last year. Um, I'm linking also uh, the number 99 nine here, 99. It is, um, the GitHub issue that we have for our uh, evolution of the guidelines. The guidelines are um, open. Are everyone, everybody uh, could contribute to these guidelines um, thanks to GitHub. Uh, and uh, we have for all our uh, contribution uh, for all our contributions to the newest version of the guidelines, our GitHub repository. We make also a dedicated uh, report on the uh, on the compliance level of the of our Open Air Chris guidelines. Um, in the context of the, uh, of the FAIR principles, um, based on the RDA FAIR, prin uh, FAIR uh, principles, we analyze how FAIR are the guidelines at the moment and have uh, lessons learned about uh, the boundaries of the guidelines, but also the gaps that we should uh, have should take a closer look in the evolution of the guidelines uh, regarding uh, further updates. And also uh, during our work uh, in the updating of these guidelines, uh, we identify an issue. This is not really direct, uh, directed to our guidelines, but it is an indirect. Um, issue that we have uh, the YE identifier that uh, 
the OIE PMH protocol is used, is outdated. So regarding this, uh, we have some um, issues with uh, the OIE PMH identifier, um, which is based on uh, RFCs from 2000 roundabout. And during uh, in the time of 2000, um, the, OIE, uh, the RFCs uh, from ITFF group are uh, not covered domain names uh, with numbers. So that's our um, restricted. But during the last 20 years, we know uh, host names could also have numbers in it and so on and start with numbers. Um, in this case, we have a very good uh, and useful discussion with uh, Herbert van der Sample, uh, which is uh, one of the authors of the OIPMH protocol. We also adding more and more examples and make a clearer um, description to one. All is published, as I said, on GitHub. Um, you see the link, GitHub open air air guidelines for Chris managers and the uh, directed link to the, the issue. So um, as I said, in 2015, OpenAir published the first guidelines for Chris uh, systems, but at the moment, uh, currently we are not really um, showing uh, these Chris systems and, and integrating these Chris systems in open air. This is uh, achieved during the last years. And um, at, at provide at the moment, we don't see any numbers of Chris systems, but we have uh, Chris systems in our portals. Uh, you see here a, a screenshot from open air explore. Uh, you could use our filters and filter on the latest guidelines of version 1.1. And you see 15 Chris systems um, that we are harvesting at the moment. Um, for this harvesting, these uh, mostly 15 Chris systems are um, integrated during the open air advanced phase and during the last year. Um, and we take a closer look, how can we easily or make the process of registrations in open air uh, easily and similar to um, the established registrations that we have. Uh, like from from uh, open door or re three data or uh, the DOIJ. and um, in this case uh, we have a very good collaboration together with Eurochris because Eurochris uh, provides information about or have information about uh, Chris systems. And in this collaboration, uh, we are um, develop a further part of exchanging these information uh, from Eurochris to uh, open air. And uh, this is called the DRIS, the Directory of Research Information Systems that open air is used for the registration process. And I would like to give the floor, the digital floor to Pablo for uh, to take a closer look to the dress. Thank you. Thank you, Andres. Um, so yeah, I mentioned earlier the DRIS, the Directory of Research Information Systems, as one of the kind of main areas of activity for Eurocris. Uh, next slide, please. Um, 
this is a screenshot uh, from the address. Um, the URL will be shown in one of the subsequent slides. This is basically a summary of what's available in there. Uh, at the moment, there are over 1,200 entries in this uh, directory. Thank you for, oh, yeah. Uh, from many different countries, as you can see uh, on the screenshots and also many different uh, software solutions. So the idea is that um, there is a single uh, directory, same as open door for literature repositories or we three data for data repositories where all the uh, relevant systems are collected so that it's possible to collect a snapshot of what's, what infrastructure is available out there and what the distribution is by countries or by uh, Chris uh, software solutions. Um, and this is a role that Eurochris are uh, gonna be staking. Also keeping in mind that we consider this to be a work in progress. So it's very difficult for us to keep track of every single system, every single Chris system that gets uh, launched or that gets moved into production at every single institution in the world, unless we are told about it. And this is why, uh, next slide please, Andreas. Um, we have uh, put together a mechanism that I will show in, in the next couple of slides to, for institutions or funders or national offices to provide us some details on new systems that should be added to the DRIS. On the homepage for the DRIS, you have this map as well, where the distribution across the world is shown for CRIS system infrastructure. This is mostly or most advanced uh, in Europe, although it doesn't mean that uh, there isn't any CRIS infrastructure elsewhere, particularly in India, you can see uh, the, the figures are quite remarkable. Uh, the, the name, uh, I mean, the Euro in Eurochris hints at the fact that um, Chris infrastructure started first in Europe and is, is most sophisticated in Europe at the moment. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned, uh, at the moment, we have over 1,220 Chris entries, which is definitely a lot of them, uh, covering all the worlds. Uh, you have an example there. The two first ones as listed on the search are from Colombia and from Norway. Uh, this is just a bit of a random uh, screenshot. Next slide, please. Um, this is kind of the insight on how a Dries record looks like. This is actually one of the first Chris systems in, in the Netherlands at Radboud University in, in Nijmegen in the Netherlands that uh, made kind of early developments in terms of being registered and harvested by open air uh, and hence the open air badge on the records in the dress for this, uh, for this specific system. As you can see, we try to keep the metadata in a DRIS record to a reasonable minimum because otherwise it's really difficult to keep it up to date. If we include elements like number of database transactions, this is going to become instantly outdated. And we would then need to rely on somebody at the CRIS to provide us updated figures for you know, specific uh, metadata fields on a regular basis, and this is very difficult. It's hard enough to have a contact person here. So Ed Simmons, former Eurochris president, listed here as contact person for uh, Metis at Radboud is no longer the right contact person. But it's, it's very difficult to keep track of uh, over 1,200 entries in terms of who the contact person, who the appropriate contact person is for each of and every one of them when these keep changing. Next slide, please. 
So this is the reason why, uh, next, um, we provide a mechanism for new DRIS entries to be registered uh, through an online form, which is linked uh, at the top of the slide, or by dropping us a line through the Eurocris mailbox uh, at Eurocris at Eurocris.org. Um, the recommended way forward is to uh, register a new Chris through the online form as, as linked at the top of the slide. If you don't see it added or you don't get any message regarding it, please drop us a line uh, at the Eurocris mailbox. Because sometimes there's a lot of messages coming in <laughs> and it's not always possible to um, react to every single message uh, coming in. In this form that is linked at the top of the, <coughs> apologies, of the slide, there is a list of six minimally sufficient metadata elements needed to create a DRIS entry, which are the ones anybody interested in providing a new entry should provide us so that we can add it to the DRIS. As you can see, this is the type of DRIS. Most of them are institutional, but you have other options as well, regional, national, a funder CRIS, an aggregation, international. There are several types of CRIS systems. What organization is actually using or hosting the CRIS, both? CRIS name, what software solution uh, has been used to uh, develop the CRIS? Can it, it can be an in-house build solution or uh, an open source CRIS system or a commercial uh, platform. Then you have the status, namely whether it's operational or under construction and finally the URL for the publicly available portal. This is something that is not mandatory, but we tend to recommend for any DRIS entry to have a public uh, research portal, so to speak. So that's the CRIS helps raising the visibility of the research that is carried out at the institution besides providing data for internal decision-making processes, strategic decision-making processes based on evidence. Um, one specific element for open air harvesting purposes that is not shown on three centuries is the uh, uh, endpoint URL that needs to be enabled for a crease to be harvested. This is the metadata feeds coming out of the crease system. We don't want to compromise safety of the crease, so we don't show it. Um, <coughs> If you've seen the example that Andreas showed earlier for the ISTEC uh, G Chris in Turkey, the um, endpoint URL was shown there in the summary. Maybe you can go back uh, a couple of slides, uh, Andreas, so that uh, attendees can see the endpoint. Here, here we are. You can see OAI PMH URL. That's the endpoint URL through which a given CRIS system is going to be harvested. In the case of this one, this is a DSpace CRIS based CRIS system. It's um, much easier to manage because a DSpace CRIS is essentially based in, on OAI PMH, same as literature repositories, same as data repositories. And the PMH, as you know, in OAI PMH stands for Protocol for Metadata Harvesting. So it's kind of compliant out of the box. Uh, Andreas will let us know a little bit more about it in a second. Uh, can we please go back to the slide I was in? Apologies for you know the slides. Uh, yeah, so we are not normally showing, we're not showing this endpoint URL in the DRIS um, in order not to compromise safety. Uh, next, please. Yeah, I think that's yours already, Andreas. So please, the floor is yours. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Pablo. Um, yes, so regarding the OIP PMH endpoint um, that we are showing here um, from the paramedic way, um, the, uh, the given well is mostly um, 
or the given URL, uh, the repository site has a uh, whitelisted uh, IP address range of our aggregation system. So not, net, not everybody could um, harvesting or contact your CRIS systems. Um, but in, in, in some cases it's open, in some cases uh, there's closed only for harvesting from open air. So there uh, could be different uh, solutions for this. So the research information systems uh, at open air um, is uh, something um, like uh, that comes something like out of the box. Uh, as I mentioned in OpenAI Advanced, we have uh, some uh, developments um, during these phase, um, especially for DSpace Chris. So in um, DSpace Chris, since uh, version 5.10 or 6.3 um, was an, uh, an out of the box uh, uh, exposing, uh, exposing the metadata out of the box um, regarding and compliant uh, our guidelines, our CRIS guidelines in the version 1.1. Um, from the DSpace uh, CRIS community, I saw any, uh, I saw some developments that are, that is uh, also integrate the solution uh, in DSpace 7. Um, we also know that Pure from Elsevier uh, have a compliant endpoint since version 5.14. Uh, Omega Psir uh, since version 1.2. And I think there's something more uh, that we don't know at the moment that are compliant out of the box with our guidelines. Um, from the Eurocrist RIS, uh, you see here some uh, the software platforms. Uh, Irnes, Pure, Christine, as Pablo mentioned, and so on. Omega Psia, DSpace Chris. Um, and we would like to know more about of uh, Chris um, platforms and have a dedicated um, Google Sheet with support, uh, with um, an overview of repository platforms, uh, their versions, and the supported guidelines. We will share this uh, also in the chat um, in a moment. To join Open Air, um, and the European Open Science Cloud with your products, you can, uh, you can go to our provide portal. We are in the provide community call today. You know, I think you know it all. You can register there. Uh, you can manage the data, your data source uh, at provide. Um, you could have more information about you, your usage counts. You have the possibilities to validate your uh, endpoints um, regarding our guidelines or have a first fair assistance uh, overlook about your metadata in your CRIS guidelines. Uh, in detail, in our in provide, we have the uh, regist registry or register page which provides the CRIS systems. This CRIS system, uh, if you click on this one, uh, will show um, a page which you collect um, the country. I take here the Netherlands um, and the Euro from the Eurocrist RIS, um, there was the listed uh, research information systems from, from the Netherlands. You can take one, uh, your repository um, and make uh, the and the forms of automatically fill it out by the information from the DRIS that our Pablo is showing before. Um, 
I take here <laughs> another YEPMH endpoint, but uh, it is valid. You can select some sets if there's a set selection on this one. Um, you uh, should take a look to our terms of use that we ended use in, in June of this year and the year reuse and uh, click on finish um, to uh, register your repository in open air for harvesting. After this, uh, we take a closer look uh, to your endpoint and uh, will harvesting on a weekly basis uh, your data source. And after this, the data, uh, the metadata is harvested from your um, query system. We, uh, you could see uh, this metadata provided in our portals, as I showing before in the overview slides of the European Open Science Cloud. Uh, now we take a look to questions. Um, we have heard uh, some questions before. Um, why should I want my institution uh, query system to be harvested by open air if my institutional repository is already open air compliant regarding our uh, guidelines, uh, literature guidelines or institutional and thematic guidelines? Um, this is a good question that we have uh, got uh, from you. And um, as we shown before, the Chris could offer more than only publications uh, and, and data sets. It could be also provide information about research projects, uh, also uh, about organizations, also about uh, equipment, instruments, facilities, and so on. So the research, uh, the uh, Chris system is, has more added value um, for open air. And uh, you could see here at the mo uh, here in the picture, um, in visualization of entities in the pit graph from August, 2020. Uh, be between the relations of publications, data sets, software, organizations, and persons, and funders. Uh, and this could be also enhanced with um, research in instruments, uh, conferences, uh, and so on, that would be exposed by the YEPMH endpoint. So on the one hand, um, you have the opportunity to join both communities uh, in, I say, one, uh, in, a, in an easy step. Uh, on the one hand, the Eurochris community, which offers uh, the knowledge about uh, research information management systems. And on the other hand, uh, the open air community that uh, fostering both uh, to open science, open access, and, and open data, and also the fair science. Um, you could also participate in the further development of our guidelines. Um, and we uh, offer training and support for metadata operability. Um, in this case, um, please contact our help desk system at uh, our help desk at OpenAI. And of course, uh, your research will be uh, fairly available through the European Open Science Cloud, as I shown also before. To join the communities, um, as a one step to join the community calls, similar to today. Um, also, you could uh, subscribe to our newsletters of Open Air. And you can also subscribe to the newsletter uh, from Eurochris. And as Pablo said, um, Eurochris have a um, strategic membership meeting in uh, November 30, 
uh, to December 1st in Nimwegen in the Netherlands. And you find uh, more information on the Eurochris site uh, for this. In this case, I will thank you, Pablo, um, for presenting uh, Eurochris here and take a closer look to the, to the drills. And um, hopefully, Andre, yes, Andre, thank you, Andre, for sharing the, uh, the document for making notes and questions. So, thank you very much. And we could start to open the floor for questions. We already have a question in the, in our uh, meeting notes in the chat. We we only have our comments and contributions with uh, useful links, but we have a question from Arich in our document. So take me uh, take me a look to this one. Yeah, thanks, Heinrich. Um, Heinrich uh, is asking, uh, what are the difference between open air guidelines for and harvesting from uh, CRIS managers and for from data repositories? Uh, the, as I said, the um, CRIS or the CRIS format that is based uh, for the guidelines are could exposing uh, more information regarding um, the persons, uh, like persons, like projects, um, also for equipment and so on. Uh, with the data repositories at the moment, um, you could refer to these kinds of information. The CRIS endpoint could provide this information. That's uh, two different things. So um, in the case of uh, data repositories, uh, we could take a look to the uh, related identifier uh, field and make some, um, or it could take a look to the, uh, to these persistent identifier. But if you, if we don't have any uh, object of these identifier in the open air research graph, we could not connect this, uh, could not establish this connection. Um, from the CRIS part, um, the CRIS endpoint could offer, uh, on the one hand, the metadata related to this record. And um, we have the whole information on the CRIS endpoint instead of the endpoint of a data repository or institutional repository itself. If this uh, as, uh, answered your question, otherwise, uh, please open your microphone and uh, Yes, sure. thanks, thanks, Andrea. So more or less is answered. So. But as well, you showed ex examples of CRIS, which have as well data sets. So it's not uh, always clear to differ what is a RIS or a CRIS. I don't actually know what the current means anyway. <laughs> and uh, what is a data repository? Often it's both or yeah. Okay, but, yeah. but maybe this is not an important. So um, one, but, one difference is, of, of course, the CRIS have to com be compliant with CRIF, so data repositories often. But, but sometimes, yeah, you know. Yeah, anyway, so it's not a clear difference for me between. I, um, the, as I said, this is a good question. So, so we should um, make uh, clearer statements regarding uh, why should um, we harvesting from a Chris endpoint instead of a data repository endpoint. Like maybe, yeah. Okay, okay. thanks. Thank but, but my 
question is answered. Thank you. <laughs> Who other questions? Yen, please. Yen is. Uh... Yeah, Jan Rojaat here. If I may comment on this, on the difference between a Chris yes, and a uh, uh, repository, the Chris typically aims at uh, supporting the internal processes of the institution with regard to research and uh, also has the component mm -hmm. of uh, showing to the outside world uh, what, what is happening at the institution. Sometimes this is being done through uh, some sort of research portal for the institution. Sometimes uh, the information goes to uh, national or regional CRIS to be shown. And uh, some CRIS certainly hope uh, to make the dissemination through open air. Uh, we've had uh, many discussions about that in Eurocris. Uh, so the understanding is that uh, it's uh, research information about research that is of current interest. Yes, uh, thank you. Relevant yeah. today. Mm -hmm. Is being planned currently. But most of the things you said is uh, well as well valid for data repositories or not? Yeah, okay. Maybe we just should not go deep in this discussion. It's not that important to, to have the difference between so, information we... systems and data repositories. Okay, but I, st I, I can see some aspects why you, Andreas, why you differ between both. Okay, just. It's a longer discussion, I think. <laughs> thanks. So we, we take a note to make it uh, clearer. Yeah, yeah. Here. thanks. 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 Are there any further questions regarding the research information systems. So silence says no. <laughs> I will also take um, the, uh, the floor wider uh, open to um, all data source managers that are um, in, in open air. So not only dedicated yet to uh, research information, if there are any, any questions or any um, uh, things to discuss. Yes, but I think if we don't have any other question, we can we can close. I think it was quite comprehensive, so every knows that are in, that were interested here to join uh, Open Air and to register, they know what to do. I think it was clear from the point of view of the Dries of the Eurocris directory, and then from our point of view, I think it's uh, good that we have this clear path from from the Dries to the registration in Open Air provide. Uh, we really want to have more uh, CRI systems integrated in, in, in our open infrastructure, in open air. Uh, so I think all the use, all the information was quite comprehensive. And uh, I think we have this support information and these instructions. I think everything is clear. Uh, it's great also that um, some of the, um, of the CRI uh, software platforms also already compliant with the uh, with open air, which is which is great, also. So, recordings will be made available, slides also. So you have several links here to support uh, information. I think um, I think Andreas, um, we are done. <laughs> um, so thank you, Pedro. So we are on time. Um, one hour. So if there are no further things to discuss, 
Um, I think we could close uh, the community call for today and looking forward um, on uh, our email accounts for contacting us regarding um, the registration of criticisms in open air. And um, I would like to thank you. Thank you, Pedro and André for your time today. And um, also Jan and Pablo uh, from Eurochris side that you could join uh, you could join this meeting. Um, and yeah, looking forward to hear from you all. Thank you very much. <laughs>